What's up folks? Welcome to Dish of the Day episode six. If you didn't catch, I technically published two episode fives because I had a bunch of footage sitting on my hard drive from an episode that I made back in Norway at Lisvaka and I finally got around to editing it. So that is available. I, so that's technically four and five done. We're gonna move on and just start episode six now. I'm super excited about today's dish. Today's episode also includes a little bit of an unboxing because we are dealing with some seaweed today and in honor of that, we are gonna unbox this little uh, book here called Seaweeds by Ole Moritzen. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I technically got this book uh, before I moved to Norway uh, at a bookstore in San Francisco with total intention of reading it, but then I ended up having to pack up all my stuff, so I haven't really had access to this book since then. That was a quick unboxing. What we're making today, let's explain that first. It's basically a dish of uh, asparagus cooked in dashi, and then I'm gonna make a more or less a sauce of the inside of the crab with a little bit of potato to give it some consistency. Dried bonito, hopefully you see where this is going. A little bit of lemon, I'm gonna use this one that I zested already with dinner last night. But first we need to read about dashi. Dashi, soup stock made from an extract of, this is a beautiful book. Filets from this fish are cooked, salted, smoked, fermented, and dried to form rock hard pieces that are shaved into paper thin flakes. This five fold method of preserving the fish draws out an extraordinary range of taste and aroma substances, some of which resemble those in dried, salted ham and cheese. Onbu contributes the soluble materials and amino acids to the stock, as these have often seeped out of the surface with a kombu blade. Raw ingredients in dashi are used twice. First dashi. To make the stock, place 10 to 20 grams of kombu in one liter of cold water and heat gently. Experiments show the best flavor of the first dashi is obtained when keeping the seaweed in water at 60 degrees Celsius. So the only thermometer I have that's working in this house is this little meat thermometer. Alexa, what's 60 degrees Celsius in Fahrenheit? 60 degrees Celsius is 140 degrees Fahrenheit. Remove the seaweed and add 10 to 20 grams of katsuoboshi flakes. The greater quantity results in a more strongly flavored stock. Bring the mixture to the boiling point and remove from the heat. Our dashi is boiling. Add about 100 milliliters of cold water, allow the stock to rest for a few minutes. Second dashi. Place both the katsuoboshi and the kombu in two liters of water and bring it to the boiling point, then let the stock simmer for about a half an hour. Okay. Let's make some dashi. So it's been about 30 minutes and I strained the second dashi in addition to obviously having more quantity because this is from two liters of water and this is from one. It's not as like gold in color. I don't know if you can see that, um, but it's also definitely cloudier. I think that's because we kind of like boiled it for a long time. But before I start any of my other projects that require dashi, I want to make sure that I taste both of these to make sure that I choose the right one. That is super good, the first dashi the Ichiban. So the second dashi has a little bit more of like a tea. It's definitely the weaker. It's not as strong. The Ichiban also has more body. We're gonna use the Ichiban dashi. In the meantime here, I'm gonna prep our asparagus out a little bit. I like to find the place where it naturally breaks. So there, this part is usually a little bit too tough. You can go ahead and cut off a piece and taste it. It's still pretty nice. It's nice and sweet. And as you can see, that's usually a pretty good way to sort them by length as well, because they usually end up being having the same size, the same break off point. Fine dining part of my brain says that I should peel these, but they're super, super tender, but it's just for a test and we're just prepping one portion, so I'm gonna peel them. I'm gonna pick a point maybe like halfway up the asparagus with a super sharp peeler, just so that we get a super thin, just that thin, thin, thin layer of possibly fibrous you can also taste this on your asparagus, and if you have trouble chewing through it, you should probably peel your asparagus. And as with most peeling projects, if you get a towel involved, it makes things 100% easier to clean up. If I had a dollar for every single staff meal I've had of asparagus stems in the summertime, it's crazy. But we're actually gonna use these, and we're gonna pickle them. I more or less want like oblong coins of these. And I want to go until I feel a resistance with my knife. And that means you're getting to the point where there's a lot of something called lignin, the fibrous uh, part of the plant that it uses to make a strong structure so that it can kind of like hold itself up so it doesn't. So when you feel that resistance from your knife, go ahead and taste a piece. And if you have trouble chewing through it, then you should stop with that piece of asparagus. This ends up going in the compost. 
And you might be asking, hey Justin, how come you trim the other asparagus but you're not trimming these pieces? So the fibers go up the length of the asparagus. So if I cut it this way, it's more or less similar to cutting against the grain of the meat. So you're gonna get shorter pieces of fiber and then you don't have to stress about it. So what I've made here is a super simple pickle liquid with water, rice wine vinegar, sugar, and salt. You can kind of season it how you like. Brought it up to a boil and I'm gonna add my asparagus pieces to this. A squeeze of fresh lemon juice. So now we basically have two kinds of acid working which is a trick that I learned from a guy named Vincent that I worked with at Least Vodka. It makes the acidity in your dish a little bit more complex. So we're gonna let these hang out in that pickle liquid and come down to room temperature. So now I'm starting our potato crab dashi sauce. Because I'm going so much on principle as opposed to hard numbers with this recipe, I'm going to start with a three to one ratio of dashi to potato. Chopping up our potato into small pieces. Got 450 grams of dashi here, add 150 grams of potato. We're gonna put this on the stove and let it simmer until the potatoes are just cooked. So that I have just potatoes in the pot and those are gonna go in the blender. Now I have 345 grams of dashi here in the deli. So we'll add as much as we think is gonna be good for it to spin. So we're gonna spin this and we're gonna add the brown crab meat and then as we need to, we'll adjust with this dashi here and then that will more or less tell us how much dashi to add next time to make sure the puree comes out perfect with a measured recipe. Also, because I want a little bit of richness to the dish, I'm gonna add uh, 30 grams of butter to the puree, just cold cubed butter and kind of monte that into the sauce. All right, so we're all blended up with a little bit of that rice wine vinegar. And that's a winner. Last thing I did is I took some of that dashi, seasoned it with salt, and brought it up to a boil, blanched my asparagus in that, so the salt ideally keeps them as green as possible, and then I chilled down some of that dashi in the freezer uh, to get it as cold as possible, and I shocked the asparagus in this dashi. So they've essentially been cooked and then chilled in dashi, so hopefully if they end up soaking up any liquid, it would be dashi instead of water. I was laughing that I'm plating on a white plate because it's kind of the only ones that I have in my apartment, but when I was thinking that most of the dishes at least Vaca were on, on white plates, it was more or less all we had. And the idea now with our sauce is to more or less kind of cover up those pickles a little bit so you don't see them, but when you're eating it, you get these like little quick bursts of uh, pickle acid. It's crazy, the way that the inside of the crab mixes with the dashi, the fish stock. And these are super good. I end up wanting more of these on every bite. Finding a way to make the sauce a little bit thicker so that it covers up the pickles a little bit more, which will basically just mean less dashi in the puree. I really like the flavors though. Tasting through it, maybe it's nice to pickle these, like do it in reverse. Pickle these ones and then do these as like fresh pieces just blanched. But I'm tasting these and they're pretty intense. I don't know if you wanna eat whole pieces of asparagus that are pickled. Maybe just a light um, coat of the rice wine vinegar on these. That's definitely the move. So these go down, rice wine vinegar, pickles, sauce, good to go. So I hope you guys enjoyed episode six. Uh, mm -hmm. Episode six of Dish of the Day. To me, that was a great test of a dish that I'm gonna be having on a menu that I'm doing at a pop-up at the end of this month in Bellevue. So if you're in the Seattle area, go ahead and sign up to my email list on my dinner projects section of justincona.com and you can get all the updates relating to those events going forward. If you're not subscribed already, make sure you click wherever I put that button. And if you wanna check out another episode of Dish of the Day, make sure you check out the opposite side wherever I end up putting those. My name's Justin Kana. Have a good one. But this one I'll freeze and I'll make miso soup someday for dinner. <laughs>